I'm going to make a DIY stove here real quick. This is Cafe Bustella 10 ounce can. Check it out. First thing I want to do is make some holes in it. You could use a church key if you have one. I don't have one, but this is kind of like a church key on the end of this pair of pliers here. We'll make them about an inch apart or so. Get this label off of here. Throw that to the side. All right, now we want to take out this tape measure. As you can see, this is five inches tall. So the halfway mark is going to be. Thanks for coming back. Halfway mark is going to be two and a half. Okay, the halfway mark is going to be two and a half inches, so we want to just put a mark there. That is pretty cool. The halfway mark is almost in the middle of this rib here, so that gives me a good idea of where I need to cut. Take these 10 snips and cut straight up. I think I'm going to go just shy of that, that halfway mark, something about like that. Now I'm going to come over here. This is something that you can do really fast. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this. We just need to cut a hole to put our fuel in here. I'm going to cut this hole big as you see so I can put different kinds of fuel in from the bottom here. I could put alcohol tabs in here, pieces of twigs, cardboard, whatever I have to cook with. Now we're going to cut across to where I stopped there. As you see, I'm not concerned about how this looks. If you need something to cook, you don't need to go too crazy with whatever you're using. You just need to cook. This is a survival thing. All right, we're gonna flange that out a little bit so we can cut a little bit. Now we're gonna cut it at the bottom. go generous opening there so these holes at the bottom that I put here so oxygen can feed the fire but what we're gonna do is put a pot up here and then the smoke has nowhere to go but down here which is going to smoke the fire out and make the fire go out so we need to put vent holes up at the top too let me show you same way we did it at the bottom this is so we get a good flow of air and smoke and there we go took me around five minutes or so to make this like I said it's nothing pretty but it's what's gonna do in a pinch when you need to cook a can of beans or something 
put your fuel right in here like i said you could put an alcohol tab in here or a can small candle put your pot up here all right put that to the side and as soon as we can we're going to go out and cook in that got a nice flow coming out the dam it's a good day to try out the coffee can stick stove we're going to do a catch and cook and some other things out here but first we got to put a fire in this let's do that first things first i had to find a decent place to put this at because we need level ground and this thing's going to get hot so we don't want to put this anywhere where stuff's going to catch on fire so when you do stuff like this you always need to clear dry stuff out of the way dead leaves that sort of thing and we're going to put this right here because that's that's pretty level got to get at the old fire starter now Woo, kind of messy fire starter to the side here i have twigs and sticks broken up to certain sizes first i'm going to start with these twigs and they are fairly dry you just grab a handful of them put them right here i'm going to start just making sure they're they're kind of broke up like that start stuffing this can i'm not going to be like uh building anything particular here i just want to get these twigs stuffed in there i have this set up to where the the wind because it is a little windy down here i have it set up to where the wind is not going to be a problem that looks good that looks good let's start that fire can you see the metal changing colors that's what i'm looking for right now I'm trying to burn off whatever's on there so like in the future if I want I could directly cook on this without using like a pot or a pan look at that rip and roar let's do some pruning here get this potato ready I'm gonna wrap it in this paper towel some people are like what what are you doing Now I'm going to get it wet. All right, now we're going to wrap it in this tin foil. We're going to bake this potato, but we're getting it wet so we can kind of steam it. It'll cook better. All right, so we're gonna put this right here on the side and feed the fire from the top until we're ready to cook the fish that we haven't caught yet. First thing I'm gonna do is drop shot a little bit of red wiggler on a size six Aberdeen. And we're about, we're about six to eight inches below that. So we're gonna be right off the bottom. I'm gonna try and get a bait fish or possibly something big enough to eat. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. What a decent gill. That's big enough to eat. What do you think? What do you reckon? It is not the biggest gill I've ever caught, and it is less than hand size. That's not a sandwich. That's a little bit on a cracker. Here we go. Oh. All right, that's... That's bait right there. Occasionally, I'm rotating this potato, of course, and I'm uh, having to keep putting fuel in this, which is okay. I'm gonna go through quite a bit. All right, now we've got, got us a weighted cigar float, and then down here, we have a number five split shot, and then we have a number one uh, octopus hook with a piece of bluegill on it. Let's see if we can get a, Oh, I don't know, maybe a yellow bullhead or uh, anything, really. You could get warmth like this. It would be nice to get a shoe pick, but I don't know if I'm gonna cook a shoe pick today. Time to start doing this because there are crappie here and they're probably biting. I'm starting to get a bite on my cup bait over here.
Yeah. Got them. Oh, yes, do we ever have them. Yes. That is a tank. Whoa. Whoa, son. Whoa. That is a nice, nice slab right there. Nice, nice. Let's measure this real quick. Yeah, he's uh, he's almost 12 inches. He's almost a foot long. They got to be 10 here, so he's a good he's a keeper. All right, we got us a smoky situation back there, so we're a little ways down. As you can see, I've already dispatched the fish and did some alterations to the front of them. All right, let's get the guts out and we're gonna scale it, and then we'll go back to the board and fillet. Oh, looky me! Somebody was saying, you shouldn't throw those on the floor. Yeah, anything could eat it out here in the water or on the ground. Raccoons and possums. I'm going to use the back side of the knife to be safe, you know, safety first, because I'm cutting towards myself, so don't need the sharp end to take the scales off. All right, I've got it rinsed and patted dry got a bit of an uneven surface here let's see if I can fillet this without losing a finger Come on, I feel like I'm butchering this. Well, that was kind of a pain in the ass, so I didn't show much of it because it, it was a pain in the ass. The cutting board kept moving because it's not on an even surface. So here's the fillets we got. I took the skin off them, obviously. Now I'm going to rinse them. All right, in the fish fry. That's Louisiana fish fry. To shake that up and I'm gonna let them sit in there for a little bit while I get ready to cook them to hurry this potato along I've been putting it on top for a good while now we're gonna put it back to the side check the heat eh, could be warmer it's pretty hot though all right we're stoking the fire back up we're gonna go ahead and put the pot I mean the pan on there let's add some oil to here oh Still not hot enough. Jeez. The problem is, even though I have a lot of vent holes on the top of this, when I put a frying pan on it like that, it muffles the fire down. It's starting to get where I want it, but not quite as fast as I would like. So let's see if we put them sticks under there, see if we can get a better fire, get more oxygen flow. Still pretty smoky, but the fish is cooking. Oh, and the pan is moving. It's never perfect when you're out here trying to do this. Sticks are burning. Oh, but that's that's actually not too bad. That's cooking pretty good. I think I saved this catch and cook by just sitting here and doing this because this seems to be working out best. I got some good heat under there nice flame it's cooking right along watch what happens when I put it down smoke machine but it's now that oil is super hot and that fish is cooking and we can just let it sit and the potatoes coming along mighty fine look it's flaking apart that worked out pretty nice except for the pain in the ass that it was This potato feels pretty soft and yes, it is hot, very hot. Let's see what's up with it. Oh, quite nice, nice and soft.
Let's break her open. Oh my goodness, look how golden that is. Oh no. Oh my goodness, I um ah Can you save it? Can you save it? Oh, this is probably the grossest catch and cook ever. My goodness, it's not too bad. It always happens when you're camping. You get a little bit of dirt and leaves, and in this case, a twig, but we got that out. Grossest catch and cook ever. Let's eat this stuff. Can I do it? Can I do it? Woo! Mm. Wow. Even though I dropped this on the ground, no grit, no weird taste. Let's let's just hope it keeps going like that. Oh my goodness. Woo. The crappie is good. Oh, tastes nice and clean, thankfully. <laughs> Hopefully it's not the grossest catch and cook. Mmm. Right. Knock on wood because you never know, I might end up doing an even grosser catch and cook in the future. Probably. Mm. Even though that stove didn't work out as good as I wanted it to, I think I just need to redesign it. And even though I dropped most of my food on the floor, I don't consider this a complete failure. These things happen when you're trying to cook something out in the woods. And you learn from your mistakes and you just get better. So, I know you're laughing at me for dropping the food and eating it, but mm, better me than you, right? All right. Wow, that fire is burning like crazy now. This is good. The potatoes are good too. Wow. Not a total failure. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's now five o'clock. I'm gonna put out this fire, fish a little more, and get up out of here. It's catch and release from here on out. There's a bite. There we go, we got him. Whoa, about to, about to get me in the water. It's another sakale. Much smaller. Look how tiny that one is. There we go. Nice, oh, ooh, ooh, look at this, people. Oh, it's another good size one. This one is gonna go back. Oh, I'm really happy now. Really so happy because I was beginning to wonder if I was gonna get another keeper. This is a catch and releaser, but definitely a keeper. That's gotta be over 10 inches. We're gonna just let them go. Whoa, that's pretty nice, but believe me, they get bigger out this way. Going back home, Sokole. Hopefully next time I do this, I don't drop the food on the floor. So, in the near future, I going to try and make another stick stove different design hopefully it'll work better i think maybe i should go bigger wasn't too impressed with that but i was able to cook on it but most of the places i go i don't even need those but they are great ideas for containing a fire and cooking something in a pinch believe me a stick stove that you would buy online and amazon or some fancy camping store is going to run you a lot more money than a can of coffee will so price wise awesome all right, like I said, I hope I don't drop the food next time, and I will be doing another one of these, something similar but a little different, not with a coffee can. Like, share, comment, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff, and I will see you next time.